In this episode, do you want to die as marketing expert? <laughs> I'm not sure. For example, love your work. During burnout, you hate it. If you love doing sport, during burnout, you hate it. So when you drink coffee, you want to drink coffee more because your brain knows that it's rewarding.、Mm-hmm. And also with sweets, also with some other activities. So that's why some drugs. Are so addictive because they. How can we change this pattern? First of all, when we know how the system works, we can control it. Positive dopamine sources, because you name just negative ones, but we need to have some hope. <laughs> easy, easy. For me, the worst experience was intermittent fasting. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our podcast Wellness in Cares. And today, I'm excited to introduce a person who is a biohacking wizard, health coach, and he can talk for hours about dopamine. Please meet Dolly Kozlovsky. Yeah. Hi, guys.、Uh, thank you for having me. It's a great pleasure to be here with you and all the listeners. So. Yeah, amazing.、Uh, yeah, you used to work. As far as I know, you used to work as a marketing director of one of the biggest、uh, cinema chains in Ukraine, and now you are based in New York City. You are a health coach, and you are starting to get certified. As far as I know, you tried、uh, ayahuasca and a lot of other things. And Maria and me have a lot of questions to you. And to start from, so like I know I'm. We mentioned a lot of things about you, but from your words, tell us who are you and why?、Uh, why what you are doing is important. Thank you, guys, for introduction. And who am I?、Uh, you know, I ask myself this question too often. I think.、Mm-hmm. Uh, first of all, of course, I am a human. It's very important to be a human. I think, as far as I know, yeah, I'm human. I. Believe in metrics and all this, but I think that definitely I'm here. Second, I'm Ukrainian, and not only by passport, but deep inside, I mean, I have Ukrainian soul, and it says a lot. Like, if I want to describe my, describe me,、mm-hmm. I use this word because to be Ukrainian means a lot for me. Second one. Dog lover, and I love、mm. all the animals, especially dogs. And I think you can be a bad person if you love dogs. We <laughs> 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 have my、uh, Labrador, and we moved to the United States together, and so we have two Ukrainians here <laughs> now.、Um, another part of me is. Person who wanna contribute to this world, person who wanna make this world like zero point zero 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 one percent better than before me. And I think my, this this my value plays a huge role in everything I, I do in my life. So. Especially now, like house coaching, because doing house coaching, you you can contribute to human you're working with. And for me, it's a, I don't know how to say it. For me, it's the best part of my life when I see result of my work, and I don't need. To, I need money. <laughs> I need to. I need to eat, and my dog also he needs some high quality food.、Um, but money never there to make people also. This is a thing. This is how I am. I love this part about making the world better just、uh, by a small percentage. I imagine like if all people. Would aim for the same goal, like making the world just better, just just a little bit. 
like imagine this uh, would, number would add up to a huge number and which, which, which would be just tremendous change. Yeah, I just realized that, that there's so many people in this world and if all of us will contribute to small, yeah, it would be tremendous changes in the whole world. It's interesting uh, for me uh, to ask you, like, do you realize that you have already influenced some people to change their lives in, in a better way? You know, you think I'm a bit shy? <laughs> <laughs> because, because for me, it's very hard to answer this question. I want, like, my subscribers or my clients, they can measure my influence on people mm -hmm. it's it's some kind of egocentric to say yeah of course i changed like this his life her life their lives and and i think i'm not that kind of person who can take this credentials here for mm -hmm. for the job because i want my clients my subscribers say that and if you ask me, do they, do they thank me for my job or my information that I share? Yeah. Uh, sometimes I receive messages from different people who I don't know, and they share their changes in their lives. And how my information that I share change their life mm. and i'm not a professor i'm not a doctor and i just like i share information from those one who work in labor laboratories who make some inventions like a bridge from that information to the person who might need to help right kind of yeah yeah uh yeah i can say that how do you feel when you receive those comments? Oh, it's it's a hard question. <laughs> it's easy to say that, oh, I'm so grateful and I'm so happy to receive them. But to be honest, when I see someone saying this uh, gratitude, sending this gratitude to me, I don't know why, but I need like 10, 15 minutes to, okay, we should open this message to just, just, uh, we need to embrace and in your like, to you, and I don't know why because for me it's somehow and sometimes it's hard to accept this because maybe it's some psychological issues <laughs> that I, I can um, see all these messages and I can wait like day second third before I open them because i need i need some uh, energy to to save some energy to prepare for, um, for it and the hardest part is to reply for all this uh, messages because i think people shared a lot of energy with me like in the video need to share something Back. with them mm -hmm. but, yeah and it's sometimes it's very hard because you're not always have this free energy uh, yeah if you know what i mean because uh, it's, uh, it's a bit hard uh, topic for me yeah i know what you mean uh from influencer experience uh, it's like how people receive also energy, for example, for me, my Instagram was always a safe space where I was getting the energy while sharing the content about my acne journey. And it was for me, my <laughs> dopamine <laughs> also, uh, because I was not receiving those words from outside world, external world, from physical world, but I was receiving love, support, compliments from literally from strangers and uh, 
I, I was also like dealing with imposter syndrome because like people are just appreciate me for who I am. That's all. So I actually didn't do anything except being myself and people thank me forever for that. And, uh, now it's like, uh, it's just my kind of meditation to read it, to, re- to receive it. But in the past, I was also dealing with that, that I was like taking d- detox, ex- detox, ex- uh, detoxes, uh, breaks to, uh, just not to receive so much uh, information and attention uh, to my side. Yes, I think it's not so easy to receive uh, so much um, attention, so much information. And I do not imagine how like uh, stars or, or really uh, famous people, how they deal with it. They have money. The... <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe. And, uh, Tolik, right now you don't mention, like, for example, when you present yourself, you don't mention that you're a marketing specialist and you used to work uh, as a marketing director, uh, in the cinema industry in Ukraine. Like now the story is over, uh, as I know. And why did you decide to make such a drastic, uh, change? I can say that I'm not a marketing specialist anymore because I, I can uh, forget all this knowledge and I can forget all these uh, skills. Uh, but yeah, uh, this period of my career is over. And yeah, I, I was really happy working in uh, Planet Kino. It was there one of the best times one of the best things in my life so far. And it's an amazing place to work, amazing place to create something wonderful. But one day I realized that do I have a mission in this life? Do I have any purpose? Like, as a human, as a marketing specialist what is my purpose what is my goals in this life and at the next moment i imagined you know this picture when i'm 99 years old i'm lying in lying in my bed surrounded by all my grand grand sons they around me because i'm dying and they and i have one few hours to share all my life and all my best moments as a life. And they asked me, Hey, grand grandfather, can you tell us the best thing that you ever done? What you're proud of? And I like, yeah, you know, I won a few effies. I launched some really successful marketing campaigns. I created few brands that are leaders of the market. And I was so terrified of this, <laughs> of this mm-hmm. thought that, and I was like, do you really love it? Or you, I, I was doing marketing because from the very beginning, I was uh, owner of startup. I was like 19 years old then, and I was responsible for marketing. And then I, I had like some switches and some changes, but eventually all this year I was marketer, like marketing mm-hmm. specialist. And then I was invited to plant Kino as a digital marketing lead and then chief marketing officer because previous chief marketing officer quit his job and I was proposed to, and this is, mm, not like my aim that in when I was 19, I wanted to be a chief marketing officer. I'm not sure that I even know who chief marketing officer was. So <laughs> it wasn't my goal. And, and yeah, at that moment, 
Do you want to know why is it? It it didn't make me like to switch uh, immediately, but I had this thought in my head, and, and of course at that time I also wasn't I wasn't doing my best in you know work rest balance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't have this knowledge. I didn't have this ability to balance my life. At that period of time, I, I, I think I gave too much to my job, to my mm-hmm. career, too much my time, health, sacrifice, a lot of sin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. And of course, at that moment, I had some problems with health, and problems with my physical, mental health, and yeah, it wasn't there. From one side, it was very nice time. I love it. And from and on the other hand, it was really uh, hard time. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, I remember during our previous call, you said uh, that uh, you ask yourself this question: uh, Do I really want to die as a marketing expert? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I was thinking a lot about this question because I'm a marketing expert right now, you know. And uh, then, <laughs> do you want to die as marketing expert? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, and a few days later, I found out this. Uh, I found this phrase, uh, and it sounds like this: uh, If you want to know who you want to become, you have to ask yourself a question: Who do you want? Uh, who do you want to die as? Mm-hmm. I'm still thinking about this and trying to digest this information because it's not easy. Why you haven't asked me? I I needed to think about this too, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Dmitro, next time you start me too, such philosophical questions. (laughs) I have to work all with therapists. Tolik, as far as I remember, you also mentioned that uh, at some point of your life, you ended up being completely burned out from your work. And it was you, and I want to ask you what led you to this condition? What happened? Yeah. It was that, I think, my last year in, uh, you know, you know, this real realization, everything. And I'm the person who started paying attention to his health, not because I realized that, wow, I now want to switch, because I was so fucked up. My health was so bad and my emotional state was so bad that the only way to live a happy and healthy life was to dive into all these knowledges. So this situation uh, was a few years ago. I don't remember exactly. I remember that at the time I had really hard time on, on my job, on our company. It was something after COVID period, like and uh, we, my company is cinema chain company, and of course we had a hard time during COVID. And this period was when we had a lot of different projects. And after COVID, we lost half of our team. And the workload was yeah. intense went to bed at 11 p.m. messaging telegram with my co-workers at 11 p.m. or 12 p.m. and mm-hmm. I wake up at 6.30 or 7 from messages from my co-workers. And this was my basic sk- schedule. And you can imagine how my mental state was. So I never thought 
I never knew anything about burnout. This state is when you're you simply can't enjoy anything that you loved before. So if you for example love your work, during burnout you hate it. If you love doing sport during burnout you hate it. You don't have energy for anything. And at one moment I realized that okay, I need some medication, I need something to to go through it because I can handle it alone. And I called to my mother, she's uh, very into all this healthy and health and medication because she's also a big fan of healthy way of living. And and yes, she proposed me to come to her and use dupers. It was it was my first time on the dupers. So it was something terrible for me. And I went to my native town, Nikolai, in Ukraine, it's in South Ukraine. And I spent ten days on Drupal. Like I'm it, it was like I'm thirty or thirty I don't remember, thirty one maybe. And for me it was some kind of disaster when you're like you're thirty and you're on Drippers, like I saw in the films like when you're, I don't know, you've had all this alcohol poisoning and you use this drip after yeah. like one week of uh, parties. And I was like, this is me. Seriously, this is me. <laughs> yeah, and, um, but now I can laugh on it. But then I was really scared. I was terrified. Yeah, wow. Well. And, yeah, and that was the story. It was my first call from the universe, like, you're doing something wrong. It shouldn't be this way. It's not the healthy mm -hmm. way of being. Yeah. So this is the story. Mm -hmm. So, and, like, thank yeah. you so much for sharing. And, uh, you know, once I saw one TikTok video where marketing especially shared, guys who work in marketing, why do we take our job so serious? We are not doctors. We are not medical specialists. We are not saving lives. We just make ads. <laughs> Literally. The world will not stop without our work. If the campaign is not large, doesn't matter. Like, nobody will die from that. I think I know the answer for this question. Yeah. The answer is money. Yes. And it's a very powerful tool. When you work with money, you do say do. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of pressure on you. So, bad work, no money. Good work, money. Good work, you can eat. Yeah. Good work, you can eat. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can say, based on my work, uh, and I also feel this pressure, like, the main goal for us is to keep uh, a normal price for acquisition of users, right? And whenever it go way up, I, I can feel this nervousness. I can feel this anxiety that something is going wrong, you know. I tr I'm trying to work with this, but sometimes it just uh, gets gets out of my hand, you know, and you experience these feelings. But it's something that I just deal with. You spend your salary on therapists, right? <laughs> <laughs> on therapists, uh, yoga, and uh, other retreats. <laughs> yeah, and see, this is like this circle. I, I was there, the same. Like, yeah. okay, I have my salary, but I need to spend on um, this specialist, those specialist, this specialist, I need to help myself to uh, be okay. <laughs> yeah, to recover. Yeah. I just want to quickly summarize for our audience, what are the main signs of burnout based on your experience? First, you have zero energy, mm -hmm. like minus five. You know, this, when you have this building and you have in the building this ground, ground mm -hmm. floor, this is it. <laughs> this is your bottom. Second one, you, before burnout, you, you were, you were enjoying some, some part of your life, like maybe work, maybe going to the cinema, maybe evening with your friends or your, partner 
during burnout, you hate all these things because they make you anxious. You don't like them. You don't have any like or love in your life. You just don't need the same thing. And it's really terrifying. And the third one is, as for me, you don't know how to go out of it. So you don't know how to deal with it. You don't have answers. It seemed for me that, okay, this, this is who I, who I am now. This is my new mental state forever. And this is the worst part. I think this is really mm. cool. Cool. Oh, don't recommend anyone. Zero out of, out of 10. <laughs> no recommendations. Uh, I think, um, you know, like many people in Ukraine who worked in Ukraine, like I worked in a, in Kyiv in a digital agency. I felt very similar. <laughs> Was the most burned, burning period of my life, I think. And when I moved to Germany, um, I was like, guys, do you work on Friday till 2 p.m.? You don't have supermarkets on Sundays? <laughs> Nobody is texting me on the weekend, literally. Nobody is toxic. What is going on? I think the difference, especially in marketing agencies, People for these agencies are just a resource, like money or time. If you lost your ability to work, they will change you. Yeah. And yeah. this is a reality of businesses, a lot of fields of work. The situation is the same. Like I'm now I'm sitting in front of Wall Street. I spoke to some guys from Wall Street. And they're all Xanx. That's the only way to live their lives. What's that? And they're all is a, it, subscri it subscribes when you're on ADHD. It's, it gives you a huge dopamine spike. So it's huge energetic. You can be focused on it's, mm. it's very similar to amphetamine mm -hmm. but medication it's mm -hmm. medication for adhd okay okay mm -hmm. xanax is antidepressant so it's sedative okay. you use adderall in the morning to be active you use xanax in the evening to have ability to sleep okay and you work in this cycle plus not mentioning external factor like extra caffeine extra stress and yeah Wow. Panic attacks, panic attacks, like, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and maybe some other antidepressants because that's what uh, doctors can prescribe you when you're in this state. And uh, as we started the topic about dopamine, uh, so you pay a lot of attention to this topic. And first of all, could you explain, please, what that dopamine and how does it work? Uh, yeah, of course. This is the topic I, start, I have started my career because I was in dopamine deficit state. And mm -hmm. At that moment, I realized that, okay, this is your second call from universe that you should be careful with your health and you should work in it. So dopamine is neurotransmitter. It's a neurotransmitter is a chemical that helps to activate some part of our brain. Dopamine is, helps us to feel reward, to feel pleasure, to feel energy, to feel focus. So if you have enough dopamine, if you have dopamine, you can sit on a hard task and you can focus on it and you can solve it. So mm -hmm. when you have dopamine deficit state, you can focus, you don't have energy, you're 
in bad mood and you're like very distressed. So, so it's like you... uh, inner hormonal motivation. It's called molecule of more. So mm -hmm. we want to achieve. Dopamine is uh, released when we want the reward, mm -hmm. when we receive reward. So mm -hmm. for example, you're coming. Do you, do you like coffee or pastry? Uh, uh, today I had three cups of coffee because I needed to concentrate and study. <laughs> Oh, wow. Maybe you're my client. <laughs> it's like I already told Mitra that on the weekends I'm going to watch Tolik's Tolik, video about caffeine. <laughs> it's like uh, I'm not addicted, but uh, sometimes it's, I it's just... It's what all addictors said. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. The first Sorry. Is here. The first sign of... <laughs> But yeah. I'm accepting this, so okay. <laughs> Good. I don't yeah, so... Oh, you don't, you don't drink coffee? What about tea, matcha? Uh, very rarely. Tea, some herbal tea, but it's very rarely. Maybe like once, twice a week, just when I meet someone. Wow, wow. It, it's really when you're in condition, so you're... You know that 90% of adult humans consume caffeine. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So you're either 10%. Mm -hmm. Feel unique. Yes. <laughs> yeah, feel unique. So, so you're one out of 10. One of 10. Right now, I want to make a quick pause. As many of you guys know, I used to have severe acne condition. Right now my skin is not perfect, sometimes I'm breaking out, get acne scarring and pigmentation, and I can get upset, I'm just a human being. And the tool that helps a lot my skin and mood is red light therapy, especially this red light therapy LED mask by Current Body. I use it over six months and what I have noticed. My skin feels glowing and acne scarring fades away much faster. Additional bonus, it was scientifically proved that LED light therapy helps with our mood, especially during these dark days. I use this mask or in the morning or in the evening, depends when I have time. It takes just 10 minutes to care about your skin. If you want to try this LED mask by Current Body, I have 15% discount for you. My code is Maria with double I C B. Also, the link is in description box. Yeah, I try to stick only to water, my favorite drink. It's amazing. Yeah, that's it. I wish I could do it, but I think I will try something someday because I drink coffee very rarely, but I drink much and tea. Mm. It's the same, it's the same thing. So. I didn't drink coffee for more than one year because as an acne freak, I was tracking every product I consumed, if it affects my skin or not. So actually my life didn't improve at all from not having coffee and just, but like I had just green tea, for example, because I, I, if I need to cancel coffee forever, I can, I, I'm not addicted, mm -hmm. but green tea, it's like so, so because it brings me more pleasure. Uh, in some moments, like I use coffee for the energy when I need the boost and concentration, but for life, choice, green tea and matcha, they are definitely better. Okay, so let's say, for example, some almond croissant. Everyone loves almond croissant. Yeah? I have never tried. <laughs> okay, what is your favorite pastry? Uh, um, yeah, uh, cinnamon roll. Cinnamon okay. candy. Okay, so... For example, you're walking on the street. You're walking past your favorite 
bakery and you when during your walk you smell the smell of the cinema in the, yeah and you feel this feeling of excitement feeling of good smell you imagine how you will go and buy this cinema you feel this motivation to go into mm -hmm. but 30 seconds ago you even didn't think about it so this is dopamine it makes you crave something makes you go and do something mm -hmm. so it gives you motivation to have uh, to achieve something so this is dopamine and how it works in our brain when your brain and you think that something is rewarding like when your brain uh, connect some action with the reward it released dopamine it released it mesolimbic system it doesn't matter it's the part of the brain mesolimbic pathway and you remember this scene as a reward so the next time like when you meet the same action i don't know your cinnamon bun your brain will remind you that this was rewarding it will release the dopamine to make you achieve this reward again so coffee also releases the so when you drink coffee you want to drink coffee more because your brain knows that it's rewarding mm. and also with sweets also with some other activities so that's why some drugs are so addictive because they like for example methamphetamine mm -hmm. released one thousand percent of dopamine in very short period so it's huge spike of dopamine and yeah. that's why from the very first time of methamphetamine you you could have addiction to this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but for example taking cold shower is also releasing dopamine yes the difference between like we can say bad and good dopamine but all the dopamine is good it's like bad sources and good sources mm -hmm. of dopamine the difference is the time during which this dopamine releasing in released in your brain so when you use drugs i hope you don't it spikes your dopamine in one second mm -hmm. when you use cold shower it gives you a slight flourish okay slight down mm -hmm. it's for two and a half hours and mm -hmm. these changes they give you good dopamine good uh, quality so it didn't disrupt your dopamine mm -hmm. system because when you use all these quick rewards like sugar like social media like coffee and all this nicotine cigarettes all this mm -hmm. stuff and drugs you disrupt your system because after this huge spike you have huge minus on your mm -hmm. dopamine mm -hmm. and when you play with these spikes and minuses yeah. you can find yourself in dopamine deficit state because mm -hmm. after every uh, spike you receive you have less and less dopamine in your system it reminds me a lot insulin resistance but yeah you know yeah insulin spikes yeah mm -hmm. our body works on homeostasis state so this mm -hmm. state of balancing when we have low temperature outside our body will heat itself when we yeah. have high temperature outside our body will low our temperature our body is always want to be in balance so like i want to clarify one thing you mentioned this example about uh, 
almond croissant, like uh, when you start craving for some pastry, right? And as I understood, uh, the moment when you start craving, uh, it starts from a, a trigger, for example, a smell of croissant, right? Then after the smell, you, you, you kind of feel this excitement, imagining this croissant, having it, eating and enjoying it, right? And then you take action. How we actually can break this chain and replace a croissant with something more healthier? It's a question of habit. Because back in times when we were ancient people, you know, it, it was dopamine helps us to survive. Because we, for example, our, like, we, uh, 300 years, 30,000 years ago, we found, like, a huge valley with fruits, yeah? Mm -hmm. We ate these fruits, we released dopamine, and we remember that, okay, in this place there is a huge valley with, with fruits. We went back to our uh, caves. And the next day, oh wow, we remember that it's a huge valley with fruits. So dopamine helped us to survive. And also, the tool when the level of dopamine goes down, at that moment we feel this craving. So when you have this trigger with element croissant, mm -hmm. yeah, it spikes your dopamine. And the next second, it loses lower. So you have this deficit. And during this deficit, you feel this craving. So mm -hmm. you feel craving not when it spikes. When it spikes, you feel amazing. Mm -hmm. You feel great. But when it goes down, the next second, you feel this craving to have this ability, to have this uh, element croissant, for mm -hmm. example. So how can we change this pattern? First of all, when we know how the system works, we can control it. Because this is what we are doing in uh, like dopamine groups and what I'm doing with my clients. We are returning control into our lives. Mm -hmm. Because when we have trigger and we like, oh, yeah, this is trigger, and I will do the action. It means that we, we are not humans anymore. We work as our, our ancestors, as like back, back in time. Like we use only our reptile brain. Yeah. So in my work, and now I have a, my, like my philosophy or my mission or my goal, uh, whatever. I want to return control into the lives of as many people as I can. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean? It means that you're, when you have this trigger, you will have it because environment now, when we're living, all the companies, they use this dopamine system to make their products addictive. As much yeah. as they could. Yes. And you, of course, you will have a lot of triggers during your life. But when you have control, when you know what is going on in your brain, in your body, and when you're aware of it, you can stop, you can switch off this trigger, mm -hmm. and you can control your life. Mm -hmm. So, and the problem during these triggers where is the problem is that our brain it's very lazy and it wants to spend as less energy as it could as it can mm -hmm. and that's why he transfers a lot of actions in automation uh, like what? processes mode. Uh -huh. yeah automation mode and that's why we when we want to see time on our phones, we found ourselves in social media. And we don't know how we get there. Because when you have triggers, it switched off your brain 
and your act on automation programs and how to break these automation programs you should stop doing them and after three four weeks you can build new neuron connections that will help you to act in other way okay. and can you give me some examples of uh, positive dopamine sources because you named just negative ones but we need to have some hope <laughs> easy easy uh, we call this lists is things for our souls in, in our groups mm -hmm. so this is the list of things that will give you high quality pleasure this expensive dopamine mm -hmm. is when you take this slow pleasures for example for me it's walking in a sunny day i can walk like hours and i would and i will release a lot of dopamine because yeah. it's a huge reward for me i i love listening to the birds so i can stand 30 <laughs> minutes and i can stare on these birds stare to these birds i can sit on the beach near the sea or near the ocean and you can last me for like three four hours easily but this list is for everyone is different but there are some sources of dopamine that are good for everyone mm -hmm. and the tricky question in this homeostasis so when you doing something good it switch your balance and makes your body gives you some downgrade because you shift their leverage and what does it mean when you doing something painful to you it will gives you a lot of dopamine to balance it so cold shower nails you know standing on the nails mm -hmm. right is this board nail board okay. Right. Yeah. Sport, sauna mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. other heat exposures, sunlight in the morning, it releases dopamine. And the newest information from the latest scientific research, Yoga Nidra. Do you know Yoga Nidra? Yeah. What is it? So this is the, the type of yoga when you, when you lie down in your earphones, you close your eyes and you listen to instructions and you're doing um, mental massage to your body mm -hmm. so, it's so you're <laughs> yeah it's like it's similar but you're mm -hmm. in this uh, state of consciousness as mm -hmm. yeah as during meditation but you're like you imagine your you relax your tongue, you relax your cheeks, you relax your eyes, you relax your brows, and you you relax your right hand, you relax your right shoulder, you relax your and you're focus on these small parts of your body. So like that's how and, I'm doing meditation. <laughs> so you can try yoga nidra. Hmm? Sorry? Do you have to massage this, uh, areas or just thinking about no. Yeah. thinking just thinking about it mm -hmm. so it's a lot of different practices but in, in like last research mm -hmm. and the last research says that it releases 60 percent of dopamine after yoga nidra after i think 40 minutes of yoga nidra wow also mm -hmm. acupuncture needles in you i love acupuncture seriously it's so amazing did you start doing it in Ukraine or already in the USA? Uh, I started doing it in Ukraine. All this acupuncture, physiotherapy, and all these cups, you know, when... Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, all this... Uh, when you... When you are doing... When you do some something that is really painful, but 
in a good way, like mm -hmm. painful, that will, this pain will release a lot of dopamine to restore balance. So I know a lot of drug addicts, they use cold buses to stop using cocaine. Ah, uh, to sit in a cold bath to release healthy dopamine? To replace yeah, dopamine? instead of yeah, to replace cocaine, right. Okay. And it yeah. helps. So an example of good uh, dopamine. Like I never thought about like this uh, nails board. I was wondering like what's the benefit of actually uh, using nail boards. Are you using them right now? Uh, not for now, but at all. <laughs> yeah, no, standing on them all this one hour. <laughs> I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I use it. I used it maybe three or four times. Yeah. Uh, I stand like one or two minutes to max. So I'm not really good at it. Mm -hmm. I felt so great after. Yeah, okay, I'm buying a nail, nail board. Um, I follow my psychoanalyst on Instagram, like, and she's like a pro in psychoanalysis. Uh, uh, and she was sharing her opinion about nail boards that for people who don't really know how it works it is on a psycho level, uh, it can make so much harm that uh, people will need many years to heal what they released uh, staying on the boards. It's really like a tricky thing. Um, so I have like, I'm kind of skeptical about uh, many things that bring lots of pain in this case. Yeah. I can tell you, I totally agree with you because, for example, cold showers and cold buses. If you're in state of chronic stress, yes, uh, you in this state, and I think a lot of Ukrainians in this state, because chronic stress is when you're in constant stress more than few weeks. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine this? Like two yeah. or three weeks. Yeah, if you're <laughs> yeah, two or three weeks in stay in stress, you're in chronic stress. I'm in chronic stress for two years, like, uh, I think a lot of us. So when you're in the state, you have high level of adrenaline, noradrenaline and cortisol. This is mm -hmm. a stress hormones. Cold shower releases these hormones. Mm -hmm. When you jump in cold water or when you jump cold shower, you feel immediate stress. Yeah. It's a good stress, but it's a good when you're in good state, when you're not in chronic stress. When you're in chronic stress, it, it will, it could be harmful for you. Mm. So it could be bad because it will up your stress hormones. In, instead of that, you should add much more relaxed tools in your life, like meditation, yoga, hot shower, for example. Or, or ju just to ask, ask for a hug. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Social connections, best uh, cure of all diseases. Yeah, true. Yeah, Tolik, uh, I know you already mentioned your uh, dopamine detox groups, and I just want to ask you, what is the main idea of those kind of groups and how exactly does it help people? Maybe there are some common problems that people uh, want to sort sort out. I told you about this willing to control your life. Mm -hmm. And I think this is their most common problem because a lot of my clients, they found themselves doing things that are harmful to them, they're, that are bad for them in long perspective, but they can't stop doing them. Like smoking, social media, all these 
especially news from the very morning, all this thing that makes them depressed, anxious, all this, release all the stress hormones. Mm-hmm. And when I, I did a lot of dopamine detoxes for, for me, like, like solo. And it's very hard always to feel this disconnection from everyone because when you're in this dopamine detox, you're, you have some limitations, uh, in food, drinks, social media, and all this fast dopamine stuff. And usually when you connect with your friends, you go to the coffee, you go to a restaurant, you go to the bar, no one goes to the park walking to walk. But if they go, they took coffee. They take coffee with them, usually. And when you have this months of limitations, you feel very disconnected from everyone. So, and, yeah. yeah. And that's why I thought, well, we need a group. We need a seven, eight, nine people that are mm-hmm. connected with one purpose, with one goal. And when you're in a group, you can, your power is multiplied by other, by the number of their group members. Also, I like learn coaching, studying, studying coaching. For me, it's a good practice to coach groups of people. Yeah. Yeah. I think like having this community is super amazing because it's like kind of bring uh, value to people because they can connect with other people who share their values and interests. And it's kind of, you know, a sense of camaraderie, you know, brotherhood. So yeah, it's a good thing. Also, I want to ask one question about dopamine. Is listening to music bad dopamine or good? It depends everything in our life. So if you listen to the music during some another dopamine experience, it's not good because you double it. And it's bad when you have one spike of dopamine and another one. Like, for example, when you work on the ground, doing yoga and listen to the music. So you're doing several dopamine experiences at the same time. Yeah. So it's bad. Yeah, it's not good. Oh, in- got it. Oh. Yeah. In my you're groups, taking so- all the pleasure from my life, Dalek. <laughs> I mean, you can do it. If it's... Uh, different people react different to an experience. Maybe for you is okay. But you can check. If you go to the gym, for example, and switch off the music, how will you feel? It's uh, like, uh, for example, for me, music is my motivation and just having fun because you're usually doing like the work day. It's like there is no real opportunity to listen to music because you're concentrated on your work. And when you listen to music is kind of hobby, it's a thing that brings you joy and motivation to do the workout. So it's not so boring to do the workout, for example. And this is the question, why workout is so boring? I'm not going to the gym anymore. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, like, if you listen to the music during your work, it means that without music, you will be not so productive. Obviously, it's so. But if you make some pause in this experience, like if you make uh, some pause uh, for two, three weeks, Mm -hmm. you will realize that your productivity is at the highest level that it was before. Mm -hmm. So you will restore this ability to be... And then when you add music in some period of time, so music is a tool 
during the workout, during the workout or during the work. If you use this tool daily, it just restores you to the norm. But if you use it one times or two times in a week, it will give you extra. So this is how dopamine works. Um, okay, so how do you understand that I need a dopamine detox? Um, you can take, I know, my example. I drink coffee and should I uh, think about giving up this or not? Or um, listening to music or... Usually we don't measure activities. So we measure your state. How do you feel on scale from 1 to 10? How motivated you are? For what? Depends for what. For life. Very. So long. Ten? Mm, nine and a half. Yeah. Okay. Uh, from one to ten, how much energy do you have? Depends on my sleep quality. Okay. In average? Uh, mm, seven. Mm -hmm. Can you focus on hard tasks in on a daily basis? Uh, I had, I think, very bad focus because of social media. Can you measure your ability to enjoy simple things like puzzles or Lego from one to ten? Mm, depends for again for how long, but uh, mm, I think on seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have like ten measurements. You can yeah. ask before groups, but if we have like four, five, three, four, five, three, four, five, it means that you have some. Maybe you have some problems. Okay. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter that uh, do you have this coffee addiction? Do you have the social media addiction? Do you have uh, like social media from morning till evening? Mm -hmm. If you are satisfied with your life, if you don't want to change anything, you're not my client. You don't okay. need me. Mm -hmm. I work only with uh, those who want to change something, who want to improve something. Mm -hmm. Even if you have all one, 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 but you're okay with that, you like it. Mm -hmm. It means that you don't need it. But usually it's very hard to realize that you have this problem mm -hmm. because all this dopamine dependency makes our brain really foggy. We mm -hmm. think that we're okay, but actually we're not okay. Mindra, what about you? Well, what about me? Yeah, like energy, ability to enjoy simple pleasures, motivation, ability to focus. Yeah, I think my focus not at the level I would wish it would be, but uh, lately I was doing this uh, puzzle just uh yeah and i was super engaged in this uh process i was so excited just doing this uh you know uh collecting this puzzle because it was something unusual from uh, the things i usually do you know so in that case i felt excited but uh i also find myself often using social media and getting into this trap of just uh scrolling uh yeah, the screen time in yeah. your phone, like, uh, what is your screen time in your phone? It's up to three hours, usually. It's not bad. It's not bad. And Maya? I don't check it. Like, I get reports, but I don't read them because I'm the person who creates the content. And to create the content, I will spend time on social media. Um, so, and as a social ex social media manager for several years it was my it was my job so um i even don't think to delete it because i just needed to to have it like as part of my life 
Yeah, I feel you. I, I know what you mean. Yes, and you need it too. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, I don't consume information in social media. Okay. I just I just share, and I always try to limit uh, consuming information, mm -hmm. especially like mm -hmm. in time slots. And I recommend to all the our, your audience like simple rule: two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening, no phone. Like just ban it for all this period of time. Yeah. Like okay, two hours in the morning, one hour in the evening. It's the lowest bar. Just ban it and be happy. Um. So some people just say unfollow everyone, like on Instagram. They follow zero people, and that's why probably they will not consume so much um, content. And what is your advice, for example? So you just limit the time, or any other tips? I think that connection in social media is not only consuming information, it's yes. connection. And yeah. I want to be connected with some people I know, with some people I love, with some people I enjoy in real life. Yeah. But I uh, mute a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Just I, It doesn't mean that I don't like them and I don't want to know anything about them. I just have my limitation in consuming information in this social media. Yeah. I can like mute them, but I can write them and ask them about video meeting or ask them how they're doing. How do they do? How do they do? How are they? Okay. What are they doing? What are they doing? Uh, are they? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I recommend just mute as much as you can. Mm -hmm. and because this time limitation they won't help if you uh, it, it's, it's okay to have time limitations of course mm -hmm. but if you're on your mindset level you don't know why you're doing that why you're limiting this everything mm -hmm. and yeah. how does your brain work it won't help it will help for like 10 days when you use your willpower and after 10 days your willpower will end yeah and uh, you will return to all your basic mm, like how to say it yeah. basic basic and, level okay yeah and regarding the energy that uh, you have like sometimes what i've realized that uh, i lack energy when i don't have a clear prioritization in my day for example then i have a lot of things in my mind a lot of uh things to do and i get kind of confused a little bit and maybe this disorganized overwhelmed and then when i need probably more help with it. us as a humans it's very exhausting to when we need to decide something when we need to choose yeah. it's it is really exhausting and when you have this prioritization you solve this problem and for me i have this problem in prioritization in tasking i'm very creative but i'm not very organized i'm not very disciplined right yeah so i'm working on it this is my week the week yeah, side same, same. Also, once you said that our body is able to be healthy, and what are the top five things in your list that keep people away from being healthy? Hmm. It's a good question. We eat too much. We breathe too often. We sleep not enough. We stressed and we don't know what how to deal with stress and emotions and we are too lonely mm -hmm. in our modern life so this is five things that to my opinion the most harmful for for us as human but i read now a book of one medical doctor is 
Peter Atia yeah. is an amazing specialist. And 75 or 80 percent of deaths worldwide are caused by behavioral illnesses. So it's like obesity, diabetes, and other, other uh, metabolic syndrome, heart disease, uh, stress that is caused all these problems. Um, smoking, so lungs, problem with lungs. So eight of 10 deaths caused by our behavior. Yeah. And, and this is a disaster. How can we, in 2024, we can change joints, we can change, we can replace heart, we can replace liver, but we can heal depression, we can heal diabetes, we can heal, we can't heal obesity. So we don't know what to do with it. Like, I mean, Western medicine. And so that's why I think that eating, breathing, sleeping, stress and emotional health and social connections is the main pillars of us. How do you think, like, what's... Uh loneliness plays in uh, today's uh, new world like is it going better or is it getting going worse like the epidemic of loneliness i'm not an expert so i don't know the data but in my opinion we're totally fucked up with loneliness because we think that connection in social media is a real connection we think that messages in instagram is real connections so some of my clients they ask me do the messages with some people on instagram count as a good source of communication I said mm -hmm. no of course no imagine when you when we speak now i i can see your faces i can see your expression i can see your eyes i can hear your voice how change and you can hear how my voice change and you can if we compare this like and we connect it through the like thousands of miles and kilometers with different patterns in the world of the world and this communication is much better than yes communication in Instagram but it's not enough also, because we can't have each one, we can smell each one, we can use all our senses. I just want to add that, fortunately or unfortunately, we cannot deny that the influence of, of social media, and it will exist, it will develop even more in the future, and uh, we don't know what... Apple will create more of what we, we could have inside, like, I know, some chips. Um, we don't know. But uh, why not? Like, for me, it's like the thing to use it for my benefit. Because when I arrived to Hamburg, I knew nobody. And most of my friends here, and I have lots of friends here, they're from social media and uh, from TikTok, from Instagram. Uh, and then we met in real life. So... Um, for some, in some point of view, it sounds fucked up that offline dating doesn't exist. It's not romantic. We don't make friends offline, but if to use it in a real life, in a, in a positive way, uh, everything is possible. It depends on people, how we organize ourselves and what next steps do we do to make a real meeting happen. I totally agree with you because the difference between poison and medicine depends on the amount. Yeah. Yeah. Of this poison and medicine. Yeah, like botulinum toxin. <laughs> yes. So that's why, of course, social media and digital 
connection. That's why we're here. Yes. We knew each other in social media. Now we are talking by using digital uh, software. But you're saying that you have your real friends and you social media was first point of connection. And now you're have real friends. Or... We met on Tinder, yeah. Yeah. We met on Tinder. <laughs> yeah. And it's wonderful. Um, but it, if we compare these stories to whole picture, mm -hmm. we know that our situation is, how it said, 0 0.0001 yes. of all the picture. And uh, I want to ask you a bit different question regarding the experiments on your health. Um, uh, people who are into holistic way, who are into into holistic journey, wellness journey, we tend to firstly prove does it work on us, like this or that. Can you share with us? Uh, your best experience and maybe some not the best experience and uh, and also like the question if ayahuasca was a good experience or bad in this case you want to share me the best experience in like all some tools right in health coaching uh, you clarify. For example, or you want to share me about ayahuasca uh first of all, like in general your experiments like health and experience like diets to quit this to add this habit for example uh sometimes it could be amazing decision to quit this habit but then it turned out that something doesn't work for you at all and um i think you probably have already experimented on yourself uh there's no one answer fits all you we are all by individual so we are very unique no advices could be one advice could be helpful for one and very unhealthy for someone else this is why i'm sharing only my experience so don't please don't do it <laughs> don't mm -hmm. uh, use my experience as your own like uh, mm -hmm advice with your physician or yeah. doctor yeah so for me their worst experience was intermittent fasting intermittent oh. fasting you know when you all yeah have time frame eating so and why it was worst because i thought that I, okay, good, I'll see adult, I can go 18 hours of fasting, and six hours of feeding me. And I fucked up my hormones wow. in, in, two weeks, in two weeks, because this period of hunger releases a lot of hormones of stress. In, in, in your bloodstream, right? And yeah. in my state of level of strength, I told other, it's not the best idea. The best one, circadian rhythms, because I don't use alarm clock. I haven't been using alarm clock for six months, maybe. Wow. So, I go to bed at the same time I woke up in the early morning. My body knows when to eat, when to go to bed, when to sleep, when to wake up. So I just help my body to leave the circadian rhythms it has. So mm -hmm. this is the best recommend to everyone. This will help everyone for sure. And ayahuasca was positive or negative experience? Ayahuasca is a very ancient 
tool, very ancient and spiritual tool to achieve to achieve something. For me, it was experience to deal with my inner fears, to deal with my child trauma, to deal with my past, to see their future and me in this future. You should know that ayahuasca is a drug. So it's illegal in Europe, in the United States, in Ukraine. I did it in Peru. It, it wasn't, it's legal there. So mm. you should know that it's wrong because I always, uh, I'm not um, trying to hide it. Sometimes in social media, people ask me to say this warnings to everyone because not everyone knows that this is illegal and this is wrong. But it's very powerful medicine. It heals you. It healed me in a lot of ways. So it was definitely a positive experience. It was very hard, the hardest experience I ever had. But as after like nails or acupuncture, you feel much better. Mm -hmm. Therapy could be hard as well. You can cry, you can scream, you can feel this anxiety, depression, and pain during the session. But after, you feel good. You released your dopamine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and all other hormones and neurotransmitters, right? Yes. Wow, amazing. Uh, Tolik, I know we could talk four hours, but I'm going to ask you the last question. It seems like you have a clear, defined life mission. And for people who are still trying to find themselves, what would be your message? You always, not always, okay, you have to choose to please everyone or to be authentic. You can't please everyone. You can't be best for everyone. If you will adjust yourself because someone told you that you're not right, you're bad in this or in that, or you're bad speaker or bad marketing specialist or bad health coach, and you will, will feel, of course, you will feel doubt about yourself. But you should always believe that you have your um, authenticity. You're the only one person in the world with this character, with this voice, with this beautiful eyes, with this beautiful face. You're the only one you, you need to remember this. Thank you, Tolik. Thank you, Thank you so much. I think it's a good <laughs> message to wrap up. This Thank you, guys. Thing. Follow us, uh, uh, give us lots of likes, comments, and support because we want to make this world a little bit, at least a little bit better. If you enjoyed this episode and want to stay updated with our future content and support what we are doing, don't forget to give it a thumb up, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you never miss our latest episode.